All right, so last time we started section 3.2, we started talking about truth tables. Um, when we did this, we were talking about them as being basically just an organized way of doing a table, right? Um, and they're a table that shows all of the different combinations or different ways um, that statements can be true or false um, in, you know, in tandem with one another. And we looked at conjunctions, which are and statements, and we sort of did a truth table that, that described what that looked like. We did disjunctions or or statements, and we did a truth table that showed what those looked like. And then we talked about truth values, and that's, I think, pretty much where we left off. Um, truth values have the feature where you were told at the beginning whether each individual statement is true or false individually, and then you're combining them in such a way in sort of a one-line truth table to get to a final result. The final result says T or F, and then the truth value is that result, T for true, and then F would be for false. And then we want to take a look at this one, okay? So this is P represents a true statement. Q and R are false statements. It says find the truth value of the given compound statement. So what do you notice first on this that is different than on these? There's what, Alex? There's three. There's three statements, right? There's a P, a Q, and an R. What else do you notice? Say again? It gives you all three. It gives you all three, right? So these pieces of information up here, which are, are needful in order to do the problem, P is true, and then it says Q and R are false, right? Everybody with me so far? Yes. It has an and, and, or. It has an and, and an or in it, doesn't it? And um, just like on the last one, we see some parentheses, so we have to work from the parentheses out. Um, but we're going to have to do an and statement at one point, and we're going to have to do an or statement at another point, or vice versa, whichever the way the problem's set up. We'll do or first. All right, so starting out with this um, truth table, we will have each of our individual statements as a column. So we're going to have P, and we're going to have a Q, and we're going to have an R. And I tend to fill in the top of my columns to begin with. You don't have to do it that way. You could fill in all the T's and F's at this point that you know, and that would be fine. But I'm going to continue with the column headers. So anytime we have parentheses, just like in algebra, we work whatever's on the inside of the parentheses first. And on the inside of this parentheses is Q, V, R. What does the V mean? It's an OR. So we have an OR statement inside of my parentheses. And then once I have that or statement determined as the true or the false or whatever, whatever that writ is, we can move outside of the set of parentheses, and we have the entire statement which has the P, and this one is the AND symbol, just like you mentioned, and then we've got the or statement inside of it. So we've got everything as our last step. So far so good? Okay, so reading from the top within the directions, Tell me, what is P? It's true. They gave me that, right? What's Q? False. False. And R? False. False. So all those pieces were given information. It's like you're back in geometry, and the first thing you do anytime you're doing these things called proofs is you write down the given information. Do you guys remember a teacher telling you that if you had such a geometry course? Even if you can't go any further, you can do the part they give you, right? And there are points associated with that part, so make sure you do those parts. All right, next thing then is it's an OR statement, and it's an OR statement involving Q and involving R. So both of those highlighted columns right there have F in them. So F or F gives you a result that is F. It's false, right? Two false statements joined with OR is false. And then we're supposed to take the statement that I just created, the one in parentheses, and join it back up with statement P, which was at the beginning. So the two columns that are kind of that pinkish color, right? The one at the beginning and the one at the end. One says true, the other one says false, and I'm joining it with what statement? And, this right here is an and statement. So, true and false is false. So on this one, it mattered that it was the and or the or, right? If it had said or, I would have actually gotten a statement that was then true. Am I done? Yes. 
I, I need to write the truth value, and cat's right, it's false. So the last step, which is actually answering the question, is to write down what the last column said, which was false. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, so this statement right here where it says find the truth value indicates that you have to answer the question asked. The question asked is, is the statement going to end up being true or false? And you need to say it's false. And so that's our answer. Is that okay? All right, so when we started at the beginning of this section, I was creating these truth tables, and they had bunches of T's and F's all over them. The last three problems we've done have just been one-line things because they were asking for truth values, not for a whole table, right? So let's talk a little bit more about tables. When you're creating a truth table, the number of statements that you are given will determine how many rows, rows are horizontal, okay, how many rows you have in your table. So this tells you that if you have n component statements, then you will have two to the n rows in the table. Now, first comment, you've seen two to the n before. When did you see it? Subsets. Subsets. subsets, that's right. We saw it when we talked about subsets. So it's the same kind of statement, uh, or the same, same formula as that statement um, used, okay? When we were doing subsets, the number of ways of, of creating subsets given a whole group of things was 2 to the n. Same thing here. n is the number of component statements, though, this time. So what does it mean by component statements? I mean, literally. Literally, it means the number of different letters. Because our letters in the problem are representing our component statements. Um, we did some problems last time in 3.1 with... Um, she is a teenager and he is a lawyer. I think those are our statements. Does that sound familiar? And one of them was P and one of them was Q. So our component statements, the statement he is a teenager or she is a teenager, and the statement he is a lawyer were the two different component statements and they were being represented by a certain letter. That's what these letters are representing too. They're representing something, some kind of statement. Now, <clears throat> before I do this problem, I want to go back to the truth tables that we did at the beginning. So you can see that this description, this formula worked. So taking a look back at, we'll do the disjunction, it doesn't matter, but looking at this, how many different component statements are there here? I've heard two statements. Is it two or is it three? You have to be assertive. Why is it two, Kat? There's only two letters. There are only two letters. There's the letter P, and there's the letter Q. And the third one joins them in some way, but it's not another letter. Okay, it just joins the two existing letters. So I have two component statements. So if my formula works, I should be able to take the base 2 from the formula and this number 2 as my component statements, and this should tell me how many rows I get. So what's 2 squared? That is 4. And do I, in fact, have four rows? Yes, I do. I have four rows. Rows are horizontal, right? So I have four rows on this particular problem. So it does work for this example. And we're going to see it on another example here. So taking a look at the problem at hand, how many letters do you have? Three. Two. Two letters. I know you see three different pieces. But one of the pieces, this tilde Q, is the same letter as you have in other places, right? So I've got the letter P, and I've got the letter Q, and then I've got the letter P listed again, but it's not a different letter. It's just a repeated letter that I already listed. Are you with me? So there are only two statements here, two component statements. So how many rows am I going to have? So I will still have four rows. And those four rows will look very much like the four rows when I did the, pre, the uh, truth tables earlier in this lesson. So I'm going to need a column for P, and I'm going to need a column for Q, because those are my two component statements, and we're always going to list the component statements individually at the beginning. And I realize I don't actually have Q in this problem. I have a tilde Q. I still have a column for Q, okay? So just because you don't see Q listed explicitly here, it is in the problem, so it needs to be a header. 
but I'm sorry, go ahead, Cheyenne. Um, if Q was in that problem, mm -hmm. would there be like three components then? Is like Q and tilde Q like two separate ones? No, Q and tilde Q would not be two separate ones because they're not two separate letters. Q, I'm sorry, tilde Q is simply Q with an, something done to it, an operation done to it. It's kind of like saying that the P and Q from that last example that I was on the previous slide was a separate one. It, it isn't. It's just some way of joining the two we already had. So, but I do need a column for the tilde Q, and I don't have it yet, so let's do it next. Okay. Okay, so I've got a column for P. I've got a column for Q and I've got a column for tilde Q because it's in the problem and I didn't already have one. What am I going to do next? What's in parentheses? Exactly. So right now what's in parentheses is the P and the tilde Q. All right, so I've taken care of what's inside parentheses and I'll fill this in a minute. Um, what am I going to do next? What's my next column? Everything, exactly, Mason. So I've got P and tilde Q, and then I've got or P. Okay, so you fill in the column headers. Now we're going to go back and we're going to start filling in the individual table results. What's the first column going to be? True, true, false, false. And it's always that, right? How about Q? Okay, so if you can do nothing else, you can fill those in because they are always exactly like. They never change. Now, Cheyenne, here is the reason why I don't need eight rows, for instance, or calling this some kind of a different letter, is because this tilde Q column is based on the column before, okay? So I don't need any additional T's and F's that are arbitrary. I can take this tilde Q column and I can look back at column Q and I can figure out what column tilde Q has to be. So in tilde Q column, what are my results, my T's and F's gonna be? Right, false, true, false, true, why? Because it just needs to be the opposite of Q. So whatever Q was, I just switch it. If I had a tilde P, I could do the same thing, right? Just look back at P and switch them. T's becomes F's, F's become T's. All right, now we're at a column that actually combines two different columns together. It's going to combine column P, which is the beginning, and column tilde Q, which I just created. And it's combining these two columns with what symbol is this? And. When is an and statement true? When they are both true. So. Top column, I have, sorry, top row, I have false, true, and then false, which gives me a false statement. Okay, just a second. Okay, so the first one's supposed to be false. You, tell, you guys told me that. Let me fill it in. How about the second line? True. Right, I've got true and true, so this one's true. The third one? False. False, I've got false and false which is a false statement. And then the last one, I've got false and true, which is a false. false statement. Remember, the only way something's true in an and statement is if they're both individually true. Now I'm supposed to take two different columns in the table. The column I just created, and what are the column? P. P. This column? that I just created, which is listed inside the parentheses, and column P, which was back at the beginning. And I'm going to join them with what statement right here? Or. or. When is an or statement true? If either one is true. So if one of them is true, or if both of them were true, I get a true statement for an or, right? All right. So let's take a look at doing that. The first row, I have true, and I have false which gives me true. true. The second row, I have a true and a true, which gives me true. true. The third row, I have false and false, which gives me false. And the fourth row, I have false and false, which gives me false. false. OK, 
Okay, so there, you're not asked to do any interpretation of this. That's, we're not doing a truth value here, so there's not an answer. The answer is create the table, and we did. Okay, so this is the table for this. So what's different about problem five? There really are three letters now, right? Not just sort of three different things. There's actually three different letters. And um, how many rows does that mean I'm going to have? So there's three component statements. So there's two to the third, or eight rows. Now, we haven't created one with eight rows yet, so walk with me through this, okay? I'm just trying to draw this along. I'm still going to start out like I did before, with a column for P, a column for Q, and then the R goes next. Okay, we'll fill in all the trues and, trues and falses in a minute, but let's get the column headers filled in first. What other individual one do I need? I need a tilde Q. Is everybody with me on that? Okay. All right, now what do I need? The stuff in parentheses, right. So I need P and tilde Q. Then what do I need? Everything, the whole thing. That's right. R or P and tilde Q. So far so good? Okay, great. Now we're going to go back and we're going to fill in T's and F's, and they are going to look a little bit different than they did when we only had four rows. Because obviously I can't go T, T, F, F and be done because that's only four rows, right? So what do I do? Well, I'm going to put four T's. If you've got lined paper, this is really helpful when you're doing your homework. Otherwise, just try and keep things on the same line. And then I need four F's. Column Q. I do two trues, two falses, two trues, true falses, two falses. What do you think I might do on column R? That's right. I'm going to oscillate them or rotate them or whatever. So I'm filling them in in the way that I think about them. Every time I do this, I think for true, for false, two, two, you know, I do twos, and then I do every other one, okay? And this does get me all the options. Take a look. I've got a column on the top that's everything true. And then I've got a column that has the first one false. And then I've got a column that has the second one false. And then I have, a, not a column, I keep saying column, sorry, row. And then I've got a row that has the back two false. And that's all the different ways that the first one can be true and everything else give me the different options I have. Then the other option is, well, maybe the first statement was false, and then again it looks like the two-column truth table, right? True trues, a true false, a false true, a false false. So this gives me all of the different ways that I could combine three statements and giving them either a truth statement or a false statement to each one. Okay, tilde Q then. How do I figure out tilde Q? The opposite of, Q. The opposite of column Q. So column Q was two T's, two F's, two T's, two F's. So what will tilde Q be? Two T's. Right. Two F's, two T's, two F's, two T's. And then I'm actually going to join something together. This says I'm supposed to join column P with column tilde Q. With what statement or what operation? And. When is an and statement true? when both statements are true. So looking at this table, along the top row, I have T and then F, which is false. And then I have another T and F, which is again false. Third row, I have T, T, which is true. And the fourth row, I have a T and a T, which is true. And I can, tend, I can automatically make the next four false. Why? 
because P is false on all the next four, isn't it? And if one of them is false with an and statement, it's all false. So the next four are also all false. Okay, let's see if this is a different enough color to identify. All right, last column says the, point, the part in parentheses, which was this one, is going to be compared back to which one? R. R. So the ones that I've done are in that kind of a bluish green color. But what statement is joining these two? It's or. So as long as, say it again, as long as one of them is true, the whole statement is true. Because that's different than the last one we did. So along the blue, we're looking at the blue, column R and column P and tilde Q. So follow along on your paper or on the board. The first row is T, F, which is true. The second row is F, F, which is false. The third row is T, T, which is true. The fourth row is F, T, which is true. The fifth row is T, F, which is true. The sixth row is F, F, false. Row seven, T, F, and row eight, F, F is false. So we just go one down, you down one column at a time, and you're comparing two rows. You're never comparing three rows at once, okay? You're always going to be comparing two things at a time. So whatever you have to do to cover up the other pieces so that you're not distracted by them, do that. All right, we're also going to take a look then at De Morgan's Laws. <clears throat> De Morgan's Laws tell us how we can, um, I don't know, you might kind of think of like the word distribute a negation through something. Because it's kind of what it looks like. We've got some parentheses over here on the left. And we've got this negation tilde symbol out in front of them, right? So back in algebra, you learned that if you had a negative outside of parentheses, you could transfer the negative over to each individual piece. Do you remember doing that? Yep. Um, and you did it with numbers, too, not just negatives. You had a 7 in front. You, you apply the 7 to the first piece and the 7 to the second piece. Okay? The tilde here works very similarly. So you'll notice that this tilde gets, attract, or gets attached to the T, to the P, and to the Q. So P becomes tilde P, Q becomes tilde Q. But what else happened? Yeah, the ands and the ors switch, don't they? So if it was an or statement to start with, when that negation gets filtered through, it becomes an and statement. So you have a tilde on the outside and a tilde on the inside. Does that negate both tildes? Yes, it does. So if you had tilde on the outside and tilde p on the inside, it would become p. Okay. Because it would be the negation of tilde p, which would be p. Mm -hmm. Kind of like two negatives being a positive, much the same way. And the same, uh, the same is true for the second of De Morgan's Laws, right? This tilde attaches itself to all three pieces, so the P becomes tilde P, the AND becomes OR, and the Q becomes tilde Q. It all uh, affects everything. And we can use this same idea with the examples in language, all right? So there's two statements, and they're joined by the connective AND, right? So if I'm wanting to use De Morgan's Laws to write a negation of a compound statement, I would first make the negation of the first statement. So what's the negation of it is summer? It is not summer. Be careful. It's not to say it is winter, right? That would be the overkill we were talking about earlier today. So it is summer becomes it is not summer. What happens to and? It becomes or. And what happens to there is no snow? There is snow. And that's the, the, the one you were talking about, Mason, right? If you transfer in a negation to the word no, it just, in a sense, it removes the word no. And how wonderful that we talked about snow within the lesson that was created years ago. Like two and a half years ago, I, I did this example. And there's really snow outside today. How nice is that? All right, so it is not summer or there is snow would be the negation of this first statement. And you just negate each piece at a time. That's really all De Morgan's Laws do, is that they tell you how to negate a whole statement by negating each individual piece at a time. All right.